today we're looking at a video where we're going to focus on plastering corners. Now previously on this job, I filled in all the angles, did the bonding, did the preparation and I plastered a few walls. Now leading on to this, now we're going to deal on all the intricate corners and I'm going to show you the biggest mistake a lot of plasterers make when they do corners. Okay, in today's video I'm going to show you the correct way on how to plaster corner beads. Now this is a big thing that a lot of people get wrong, so I just want to clarify a few things in this video. What I've got, I've got a sloped wall here, I've got an angle bead. What I'm going to do is show the correct way to uh, plaster it. So a lot of people will take the plaster, come in from the left and trowel into the bead. Now that's where they'd go, they'd just trowel into it. And that's what happened. Now, this doesn't seem like a big problem, but I'll tell you exactly what happens when you do this. When you trowel into the bead, what happens? You create a dip, because your trowel is just gonna follow along the contours of that line and then come up. And what you end up with is a dip just before the bead. And what will happen when the light shines in, as we've got here, you'll see a nice little rivet where your bead should be flat, you'll have a dip. So, the correct way is actually from the first application you want to run up the bead. Now what this is going to do is we're going to create a parallel line from the bead to the wall so then that way everything from this point to this point is going to be filled all the way so rather than just having the outer edges filled and a dip because we've gone parallel and worked up the bead this centre point will be filled nicely. So I'm going to show you a little trick on this little area here. I'm going to trowel into it, get the area filled, which is what we want to do. And now, take a nice bit of plaster and run it up the bead. Now as you can see, we've got a little rivet here. That would have been missed if we would have just gone horizontally. So, what we're going to do is going to fill that in again. Now running up the bead, as so, parallel to the wall. Now, the majority of that area is filled. Now, we've got a little bit of section here that could do with filling. What we're going to do is allow that first coat to take up. There's a lot of thickness there. We're looking at about two to three mil. We need that to take up on the first coat. From there, we can work on forward. So I'll show you the next bit. I'm going to apply the first coat everywhere else in the room and then crack on with that. Okay, absolute game changer, using a spatula for your corners. What we're going to do now is come in from the left, and we are going to come through. Now, I'm just running shy of the bead. And what we're going to do, as if we're applying, we're going to follow the bead along the angle it's running at. Now the bead is obviously running vertically, so we're going to run up it vertically. What's this going to do? We're going to keep that parallel line and make sure that everything in the middle is filled. Now we have got another coat of plaster to apply, but what we don't want to do is create that dip. If we're going to come in horizontally into the bead, then we've got the potential of creating that scoop. So again, following the bead's direction, running up it, and that way we're going to keep it filled. Smug the pancake! Then there is no pleasing you! Okay, similar thing, second coat, same vein. Now, I'm using the same mix, so the plaster's quite thick. What we're going to do is run up the bead again. Now, this coat is going to be a lot thinner than the first coat. The first coat, we filled in the majority of the bead, filled in the whole area around it, it's going to be a lot thicker. What we're doing now is just topping up the bead, so if there's anything that was left behind, we're filling in any gaps now. So again, coming in from the left, sweeping in. Once I've got that line set, what I like to do is try and plaster into it. So that way, I've got a nice parallel area of plaster. So let me just fill that bit in. Now, even troweling up. What 
what we have there is a whole area filled. So we've got the bead running up, we've got the plaster running into it. We should have a flat wall now. Now obviously with angled beads, you've got to apply a thicker layer of plaster. This is going to come out to about 3mm, maybe 4 depending on how the board's cut back. So generally, reveals, corner beads are going to be thicker than any other wall you're going to plaster, in theory. So that section now is because we followed up the bead, it should be flat and we've troweled into it. Now we're going to talk about how to flatten it so we make sure that we continue this level of flatness. Make sure that we've got that area filled, so I'm going to do exactly what I did before. Focusing on the edges, so I'm going to start horizontally, more to keep the edges nice and tight. I'm going to take a bit of plaster. Again, we're not needing a lot, but you can see the areas where it's quite low. I'm going to focus where the plaster is put, aim for the centre of the bead. I'm going to run up it, trial into it. You want to make sure that it's paralleled off. Looking down, come up. Fill in any, there's an area there that's a bit low, fill that. I want to make sure that whole area is filled. Now that, it's got an even coverage, we're looking good. Now let it go off. Now it's the exact same reveals. What I want to be doing is applying the plaster, but essentially we're flattening by running along the bead, not through it. And that way we're going to fill in any gaps at the bottom of the bead and we're going to make sure that the whole area is fully covered, there's going to be no dips, and we've got a nice flat line running all along the reveal. Now, that is how you do it with the reveals. We're going to give the walls a quick flatten with this uh, speed skim. Make sure the walls are flat, the plaster around it is flat, and then we're going to carry on and make sure we've got dead tight corners. Okay, so this bit is fairly straightforward. Now, I'm going to turn this on in a minute as well because the light is really on me. I'm sure you can't see much, but let's see how we go. Now, I've got the parallel line sorted. We've got the angle sorted. What I want to do is brush the corners in. I'm going to trowel from the outwards in. Now, a lot of the work is done. A lot of this is flattened. A lot, and the areas that we're worrying about it's kind of done. So all we're doing now is make sure there's no gaps on the bead line. We want to fill them in at this point. So with the fat from the trowel, to make sure that the beads are filled nicely. So we're still running up the bead, but you can see there's a little bit there. Fill that in. But now we can start coming into it. So what I like to do at this point is troweling into the bead and run down it. So we're running into it, finding out where our level is. We're also coming back on ourselves to run down it. So we're still keeping that bead filled as we go in. We're not neglecting and creating any dips. So this is how we're going to start to get our beads nice, flat. And this is how we're going to start filling them nicely. Same down here. Work around that bull nose. Take a bit of fat from there. Fill that bull nose in there. Start cleaning up on the details, making sure that everything's filled in. That's it. And now, again, wet the edges. Run into the bead, but the best thing is run the trial parallel. A lot of pressure along that bead. Make sure to be using the bead as a guide. Got a bit of area to fill there. Fill that in. And there, I'm gonna have nicely filled area. That's looking good. Right, so everything after this point is the same. Now there's one difference and that's the penultimate trial. That's what we're gonna do now. But that is the right way to fill corners and make sure they're dead flat. I'll show you the last bit in the penultimate trial. And then after that, you've got bang on, perfect square reveals. Okay, so this is the wet trial. What we're gonna do, just come in, stand at the top. And I'm just gonna run down the wall with water. It's actually dried up quite nicely because the sun as you can see, it's flat, we've got good results. And actually, this time of day with a side of glancing light, it's the biggest test on how a wall looks. Now, the difference to this one now is instead of running up the bead, 
We're just gonna sail all the way through. Because by this point, it doesn't matter. The plaster's too hard to be affecting the deck. We're not gonna move the plaster at this point. All we're doing is polishing it. So as you can see, I'm just making sure that all the lines are right. Make sure that everything's troweled in nicely. And now, clean up the edges, the trowel. I'm gonna brush in down there, tip of your trowel, score the edge there and again. And we're just gonna sail right through the bead, cleaning up any spots that need missing. And that is how you get your reveals bang on. Scrape these, what I like to do is actually scrape it when the wall's fully dry. The excess snot, you can do it now, but what you risk if your trowel slips, then you might mark the plaster. Now I'm just being very gentle. But as you can see, we've got this return. We're left with a nice, free, clean corner bead there. Just be careful you're not gonna mark the wall next to you. Nice, clean angle, flat, straight. And ready to go, look at that, that's the finished results. Now that is how you do reveals in plastering, but if you want to learn the hardest thing you can ever do in plastering, discover the hardest skill you can learn is click this video here, you'll be surprised how little plasterers know about this. Click this video and learn what the best skill is to learn in plastering and also the trickiest to develop, but if you click that you'll learn a hell of a lot. Subscribe here, thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next one, cheers.